And so this topic is somewhat interesting for you because now you can uh, evaluate something uh, with some with the help of attributes. So as you have reviewed in the last lecture, we have seen how to use attributes and how to transfer the attribute from yylex to uh, yy parse using yyl val, which is the global variable. But inside of the uh, grammar rules, in, you can also transfer the attributes of them. And that will be applied to evaluate uh, the value of the expression today. So let me just share my screen. Okay, so let me share my screen to uh, the handout today. This is not a handout, this is your handout using attributes in Bison. So you know that YY text is a lexeme in YY lex and the token value is returned by uh, the return statement. So actually there is two, two values uh, you have to handle in your yylex. For example, your yylex is returning token directly. So yy, so let me just, so your yylex is returning token to yy parse. Token is returned. And you will set the attributes indirectly to yyl val. L -val. So this default type is integer. So we'd like to change the type in the next uh, laboratory, but it is in default integer. And one way parse will refer this as $n, where n is the position of the token. So you can take a look of the simple uh, Lex input, and only the yy algorithm is set to the case when when it is recognized as a number. So when the token is returned as number, you would like to set the actual integer value. You are converting. You know that this is ASCII to integer. So your Lex analyze uh, your Lexing is converted safely into yyl band, okay? And for others, it is just not setting the values of them. So you can take a look at this and note that no attributes is set for other tokens, but except none. So I'll show this, uh, this is really working for your grammar. So let me reshare this uh, with, okay, before that, I just like to save, let's do this and delete all the drawing. And I'd like to switch the uh, screen to, the MCs. So just um, make sure your contents of the make file. So you'd like to uh, generate y.tab.c from expl.y and lex.yy.c from expl.l. And it depends on y.tab.h. So let's take a look of expl.l first. So it is same to um, the input, same to the input of here, yyl value. 
and other things. Yes, last lab, yes, it is same to that thing. So uh, for other things, it's just, just returning. So if you want to process modular operator, you have to add it here, add the modular operator. If you have planning to have a plan to uh, support other operators, it, it can be added as a token. But remember that the token should be returned as uh, a single character or some other uh, some other things. So actually, num is not defined here. It is defined inside of wider capital H because your expl dot y is declaring your token as a number here. Okay, and it is using number as a token, number as a token. And in the second case, know that the YYL bell is returned as dollar one. In the first case, the YYL bell is set as dollar three because this is the third symbol of the num is the third symbol of the right hand side of the row. So simply, you can make this as this is uh, sorry it is just uh, just awkward to okay so this is dollar one the attribute of this is dollar one the attribute of the plus is dollar two and attribute of num is dollar three so it depends on the location. And as you know, there's no value on the dollar two, it is not used. And for EXP, it, it will be evaluated in from bottom up. So it is set as dollar one. And the attribute of this is dollar dollar. So the, so the attribute of the left hand side is set as the value of the first expression and plus the value of number. For others, it is same as before. And you can take a look of the first line of this program. It is, it is just printing the dollar one, which is the value of the ex expression. So it is similar to uh, similar to the one in the lecture note. Okay. So let me just check it is correctly uh, executed and compiled. So just simply, you'd like to clear write a type that C, write a type that H, next that Y by the C. Okay, sorry, remove, I attack the C. DL is the um, command in uh, DOS, in Windows. And make it, make, make a bison flex. And the output is eval EXPR. So you, you can just test it, eval EXPR of this. So one plus two plus three plus four is ten, and, but it, it is uh, it was tested in the last lecture because the token is consists of only of a single character, but you can just add twelve, and you can use also use the spaces here, thirteen and twenty five. Okay. And the questions up here. The question. Okay, good. Then I'd like to uh, explain and I switch this screen to the today's problem. So in the last lecture, you have to handle the unary symbols. So the unary symbols can be handled as a vector. 
So this was the partial solution of uh, the last level trivial. So write a program using flex and by reading an expression from standard input and generating the, uh, the value. It is not the order. It should be, sorry, it, it is not modified correctly. Generating the value of the expression. to the standard output. You should start with the following grammar. So this grammar is a starting point. Note that unary minus and plus operators are included in the grammar above. Based on the experiment, you make a report with references. You can write a report in Korean. So these are the same as before. And you have to specify your flex and bison amplifiers with the explanations. Okay, I'd like to scroll this a little bit. Your program should read from the standard input. The input consists of a single line containing an arithmetic expression. Only five operators with a parenthesis, the positive integers are allowed for input. Also spaces and tabs, tab characters may be included in the input. But you know that only positive integers are allowed, but you can use, um, you can use uh, unary minus. So tr minus 21, it should be processable from your, uh, from your program, since you know that it, it was handled as minus f, where f is a number. So you, you have to handle like this. Uh, and the program should print to standard up, which is print the value of the expression in a single up line. The following shows two sample input output. So let's scroll this again. So let me just um, think about the tree of the first expression first. So you know that it is um, the structure of this is that times is executed later. And this is a unary plus 25. And this is a unary minus and binary minus two, three. So it will generate minus one here. It will generate plus one here. So it, it is 25 plus 25 times one, it is 25. So how about the second case? It is the case where times should be executed first because it, it is left associated and divided by is executed later. And 47 is, is the right operand of the division and the left operand of times is that unary minus and 12. The right operand it is, uh, so you have to select which one is this and you know that this, it is the right associated. So minus binary minus 31 with unary plus 12. So 31 minus 12 Korean minus 12 is makes um, sev 17, 17, 19. Okay, so this is the value of 19. However, this it is minus 12. So 19 uh, times it is too complex. So I have to check it with my calculator. So executing a calculator. So 
So I'd like to just move this a little bit. Just move this. Okay, so I reshare this in the calculator. Minus 12 times. But you have to make a parenthesis. So how can I make a parenthesis here? Hmm. Maybe you want this kind of minus 12 times opening parenthesis 31 minus 12 closing parenthesis and divide by divide by seven makes minus four point eight five blah 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 and you know that you have to truncate the integer division so it makes minus four <laughs> color arrogue you have made this okay so I'll just check it again so minus twenty eight divided by 47, same result, thank you. Okay, so this is the description of the simple problem. So I expect all of you uh, is able to solve this problem on time because Even though it is hard to implement this uh, from scratch, but you have learned the Python, so it is okay. So do you have any questions? Uh, I'd like to uh, wrap up this lecture if you don't have any question. No? Okay. <laughs> then thank you all for joining this lecture. And please remember that the deadline is 9 a.m. tomorrow. So let's go today. Bye-bye. See you next time.